Hi, my name is Dick Morrison. I'm 21 years old and I'm a student at City of Glasgow College. So, I kind of got the idea for this documentary from just one day googling to see how many single parent families there are in the UK and I was just kind of staggered by the numbers and I thought, I've never really seen a documentary about this, I've never really seen anyone actually go into detail about why there's so many single parent families. So I come from a single parent household, uh, my mum has raised me from when she was very young. I wanted to kind of get a grasp on just why there's so many single parent families, considering I come from one myself. I have a lot of questions myself about this subject and I just kind of want to get mum and answers. By the end of this documentary I'm kind of hoping to have shed some light on the subject and you know educate a lot of people about the different perspectives from people who are either from single parent families or the single parents themselves. Right, so the first thing I need to do as part of my journey is I need to go and talk to my mum. She knows a lot about what was like raising me and her relationship with my dad, so the best place to get answers will be hers. I've always been really proud of my mum and what she's accomplished as a parent. She gave birth to me when she was only 16 and then she was able to go on and have my two little sisters, Marley and Callie. And she's always been there for us, always looking out for us. And honestly, I couldn't be more proud of her as her son. You ready? Uh, right, so first question I want to ask is what was, what was your relationship like with my dad? Uh, it was just a teenage kind of school thing. We were in the same classes, something. Did you ever expect to like, be a single parent when you were younger? No, I don't think anybody expects to be a single parent, but um, I never wanted wings until I felt pregnant with you. Uh, what, what, what was your kind of thoughts going through that? Like when you found out you were pregnant, what kind of like went through your head? Scared mainly. When you were scared? No. I had a lot of help for obviously your grannies and your granddad. When you say obviously it was hard, what, what was like, what were you mainly like struggling with? It's just obviously childcare, money, things like that. So that is, and that's how obviously when they helped out I could go and get a job and stuff until your granny was really no well. Yeah. And she couldn't really do too much. Was granny and that really helpful then? Like looking after me? Yep. Plus I had three weekends. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think there's so many single parent families like in the UK? Uh, I think uh, it's just in the circumstances. Because it's not just single mums, it's single dads as well. Do you ever regret like getting pregnant and like starting a family a bit too early? No. Because then if I didn't do that, then I wouldn't have you annoy me. <laughs> well, so you're, you're fully satisfied with how everything comes up? Ah, uh, maybe for me a wee bit less than about 50 times a day, that would be maybe some helpful. So that's me just got back from my mum's. I had a really good conversation with her and honestly, I just learned quite a lot. I'm now planning to go to my friend Caleb's house to interview him and his mum to talk to them about single parent families and what it's like coming from that background. So let's go. What was it like growing up in a single parent household? I liked it. Well, there was nothing to compare it to. There was just always me, mum, John, and my younger, um, William, come on, stepped up. Um, so he was always there. So it was more of a full time, but kind of stepdad role for like the start. Mm. Then it was good. So I can't really compare it to any other household. Do you think like coming from like a single parent like household, do you think that ever had like any personal effect on you? I'd say it was more like sometimes you're in the house, you know, babysitting, stops you from doing stuff. But it didn't really stop me. I was kind of happy with it. Plus, didn't what? stop any plans. Nah. Well, what was that like? Looking after the wedding, kind of having to like step up for like brother to kind of like, well, looking like almost a dad role. Uh -huh. I liked it. It was kind of a stepping moment, helping them out. Being sure for them. Uh, making sure they're on the right path. Helping her in the house, like doing stuff with, for your mum and that. Has that ever really had an effect on your personal life? Helping her in the house is cooking, cleaning. It's like pretty much 
how fuck points so it's kind of like when I move out I'll know how to everything do you think it's ever a thing like stressful whenever like stress you out then? Aye, it's stressful sometimes because mm. they're kids are young and they don't always like to listen but it's had stressful moments but it's worth it uh, I've done a wee bit of research into this oh. 2.9 million single parent families in the full of the UK yeah that's a lot of people like how do you how do you think that's happened like what do you think the main cause is i don't know there's a lot of young people which you know there's their lives they can have kids if they want um but sometimes they have babies they're scared they don't want to be but then there's time where it's like a lot of young people having children with doing brilliant jobs so i think it just comes down to even if they're not ready like people have kids it just kind of happens from your point of view how do you think your mum's kind of like done as a parent through like everything she's kind of went through I'd say brilliant, because obviously she couldn't work when we were younger, but me and John had everything we ever wanted. So I'm going to go and obviously talk to your mum, yeah. and think I get her point of view or anything. What do you think she's going to say when I ask her what it was like raising you? Oh, I don't know, but hurting her recycling bins, man. <laughs> they need to go. They need to go. <laughs> Jesus Christ, don't like you. Don't approve of that. Raising the kids are fine, but recycling? Nah. <laughs> they got strong suit. Right, cheers for, cheers for that. Cheers for that. They got all it. When you were younger, how did you actually end up pregnant with John and Carol? Oh, John and Carol's pregnancies were not planned. I was 17 when I fell pregnant with John, 18 when I fell pregnant with Caleb. So I had two children when I was only 19 and it was tough, but we, we grew up together. We grew up, we grew up friends more than mum and, mum and sons. I know you've, you've got your ex, William, who you were with together for 15 years. So I want to kind of know how did the pair of yours meet and did you ever really think that you'd have the massive family oh, that you did? No, I actually met William in school. I met William when I was only 12. I was 12 and he was 13. He was a friend with a friend that I hung about with as well. So that was interesting. It was not somebody I ever imagined having a life with, having children with or actually marrying. Um, so I'd known him for like forever and then we had met up when I'd already had John and Caleb and that's when we started our relationship together. William was such a good dad. He was full of, he was hands on when it came to the kids and he was hands on raising John and Caleb as his own as well. So that was an, an added bonus. Mm. How is your relationship with William? Oh, fantastic. Me and William are no longer together. We're mm. separated. We're actually going through a divorce. We just drifted apart from each other after 15 years and raising so many children, but he's still one of my best pals. So we're in a very good place with our parenting and our friendship and sharing everything to do with the kiddies, so it's, it's really good. I've done a bit of research and I told Kayle this. At the current moment in time in the whole UK, there's 2.9 million single parent families. 2.9 million. So if that's two or three people to a household, that's 15 to potentially 17 million people. Wow, that is a lot. Yeah. Wow, that is a lot actually. I did not expect that. I think it was my mum who said that just sometimes people aren't ready for the responsibility. Definitely, yeah. And that can scare them and set them gone. Yeah, definitely, yeah. I can see that happening as well. So throughout this documentary, I've been trying to contact my biological dad. I wanted to ask him the same questions that I asked my mum, and I just wanted to hear his side of the story. I'm going to his house tomorrow, and I won't lie, I'm, I'm quite nervous. But I'm hoping everything will go well, and that I'll be able to actually get some answers from him. So going to my dad's, it was quite nerve wracking. I'm not even going to lie, I was actually quite scared because I just didn't really know what to expect. Me and him have never really had a great relationship and we didn't last talk on good terms so I was quite scared of what was actually going to happen when I got there. I asked him some of the questions that I'd been asking some of the other people that I'd talked to and he gave me some, some straightforward answers. I asked him about what he thinks the main cause of like just 
why there's so many single parent families in the UK and he said that it's mainly because there's just a lot of daft young people there who make mistakes and you know it just ends up with someone having to raise a child. I asked him what do you think the effects of coming from a single parent household are and they said that most <laughs> he said that most kids that come from single parent households end up in prison and I looked at him and I was like is that what you think that I'm, is that what you think I'm going to go because that's kind of where I came from, it's like, it just, it just felt quite weird. I asked him as well about his relationship with my mum and he said that he never had a relationship. At the end of the day he's always going to be my dad, he's always going to be the guy that he'll give birth to me. Only, only in the future we'll know if things between me and him get better or get worse. Overall. This documentary was interesting to say the least. I got to talk to a lot of great people and get some really great perspectives. I got to see both ends of the spectrum. I got to see that even though some people break up, it doesn't always have to end in heartbreak. Some people can actually move on to better things. If I've learned anything, I guess I would say that I've just kind of learned to have a lot more respect for my mum. You know, she's always been there for me, she's always done everything for me and, you know, it could have been her that left when I was young, but she didn't. She stayed and she put in all the work to help me become the best person that I could possibly be and, yeah, if I've learned anything, it, it would just be to respect my mum more and to be grateful that she's here. It might not be perfect knowing that one of your parents isn't there in your life, but knowing that at least one person cares enough to stay with you the whole way through, you know, it's, it's bittersweet. And even though some people might think that growing up in a single parent household must be a nightmare, if anything, I'd like to say that I'm proof and that some of my friends are proof that that's not the case. That no matter where you come from, everything can turn out right. And I'm glad that's what I got to realise from this documentary.